Hi everybody, I'm Patrick Dockery. In my life, I have worn many hats and tasted many flavors. As I travel the world, I get to know today's most interesting celebrities, cook and dine with some of the finest chefs of our time, and experience the latest trends in beauty and fashion. Along the way, I pursued my passion for health and fitness and acquired some of the most innovative wellness strategies. And now, I want to share all of this with you. So come along on this amazing journey, and together, we will experience a world of health, beauty, and life. On today's show, come along as we visit Cupcake Wars winner Casey Reinhardt of Casey's Cupcakes. Take a tour of the historically iconic Mission Inn and Spa in Riverside, California. We head to the beach to meet the chef and crew of Malibu's savory restaurant to create an amazing organic meal. And now, let's meet Casey Reinhardt. Everybody. Today we're here in downtown Riverside, California at a very special pink place yes. and it's called Casey's Cupcakes and it's pink and I love it and it's gorgeous Thank and we're here you. with the lovely Casey Reinhardt. Hi, happy to be here today. Yeah, thanks for letting us come into your world. Thanks. Well, what's going on in your world right now? Oh my gosh, so much. It's yeah. been great. I mean, I just appeared on Cupcake Wars and I was the winner. Look out, world, she's coming after you. And she's gonna serve you a delicious cupcake. And the other thing is, is that you now have a gluten-free version, which I'm very excited about. I do. As you know, yes. well, I told you, yeah, yes. no gluten for me. <laughs> yeah, so yes. I get to try that today. So it's, we're gonna... a, it's a rock and red velvet gluten-free cupcake. And so I... in the meantime, yeah. you show us some of your favorites and show us how to do it, right? Perfect, we yeah. We have pre-prepared and yes. we're gonna decorate. You're gonna show me the magic. That sounds great. Let's okay, well my favorite is the decadent dark chocolate cupcake, which is this cupcake. It's a dark chocolate cake has chocolate chips in it. All the chocolates from Belgium, it's outstanding. Okay, so let's start with this one. Sure. What you're gonna do with yours is you're gonna take these. Here, I'm gonna do this one real quick. Okay. This one's really easy. And then this is your chocolate cupcake. Gorgeous. Let's do your red velvet. Show this one's very it. easy. She's a perfectionist. I'm just a rookie. You're my teacher. <laughs> no problem. That's a gluten free. Looking yes. good. We're going to yes, put this yes, over yes. here. And Thank you have you. one more. Now, what type of cupcake is this? This Casey? is our Razzmatazz raspberry cupcake. Mm. It has baked raspberries inside. It's a raspberry cake. And then we do this amazing vanilla buttercream frosting. And we Mama. add a pretty little raspberry on the top with chocolate shavings around the side. Ooh, so you yes. want, let's, let's, let's do decorate it. that one. Perfect. This is a master in action, guys. This is a professional. <laughs> you know, that's a professional. Looks easy. Love it. This is gorgeous. Look at Thank that guy. Thank you. <laughs> Look at who's prettier, you or the cupcake? The cupcake. Oh my god. <laughs> and then we're gonna get our raspberries and everything and put it on top. Perfect. Here is the raspberry. Okay. okay. The Let's get the perfect, pretty little raspberry. And all you do is add it to the top, and voila, you're done. Gorgeous. Now I get to taste. Yes, you do. The pre-made. Gluten-free version. Yes. Now, is it, how do you like to eat a cupcake? Is there any special way you do it? Oh, I just bite right in. So I, I can just, just leave go this for on it. Hold it. Oh no, no, no. take the wrapping uh, <laughs> uh, off. Wow. Thank you. That cream cheese frosting. Uh huh. I'll tell you something, because you know I haven't had been able to eat stuff like this in a long time. Do you know I love you right now? Oh, because thank you. I can actually eat a cupcake, gluten-free, but this. Uh, icing here, cream cheese icing, is so light and airy. What's your Thank secret? Thank you. It's a secret. <laughs> oh, I mean, I thought I could get it out of her. Now, I want to see how this place works. Can okay. you take us on a tour? I'd love to. Let's do it. And then how about uh, that oven you're going to show us, that special oven? Do we get to see that too? You do. Well, let's do it. <laughs> Great. Come on. Let's go. Everything in the cupcake shop has something to do with a cupcake. And then you got the little gumball. We have candy, candy yes. Yeah, so we have some candy. If you want some candy, they're really yummy. So we have actually a cup, Casey's cupcake apron, which the girls wear. Let's go over to that big oven now. 
Okay, sounds All right, good. Let's go. Casey. Yes. So this is where all these top secret stuff takes place, right? Yes, it is. This is our famous kitchen, Casey's Cupcakes Kitchen. And you can do, I heard, 2,000 cupcakes in an hour? About, yeah, 2,100 cupcakes in an hour. In an hour? In our state-of-the-art cupcake oven. They all bake evenly because they spin. So they're all evenly baked. They're all very, very fresh and yummy, not overcooked, perfectly moist. They were. So now, you're going to let me out of here, right, with this information? I guess. You're you know, one of the first to ever you know, see this. So, man, thanks for showing us this. Is there any of other course. top secret stuff we don't know about that we're not supposed to see? Uh, let me think about it, and I'll okay, get back get to you. Okay, get back on that. <laughs> all right, everybody. You saw it. Let's go. So, you know, we're located here at the Mission Inn Hotel and Spa yes. in Riverside. Yes, we are. And people can come by and actually see you here sometime. Yes, here at my Laguna Beach location. Yeah, I noticed the grounds are amazing. You have four restaurants, 239 mm -hmm. rooms, mm -hmm. and I guess you do between three and 400 weddings a year. We do, it's a busy place. That's why we have that big monster over there, huh? That, yes. That oven, you do actual cupcake cakes, custom made for the weddings, huh? We do, we do. We cater parties, we cater weddings. We do a lot for the Mission Inn. That's amazing. I was very impressed. Thanks. And you know the thing that I noticed that's so much different about this place is the artwork is just goes to the other level. It's yes. so gorgeous. I mean, a lot of original stuff, a museum, yes. I guess. There's a lot of history here at the Mission Inn, and we'll keep you busy if you come out here. There's a lot to do, beautiful restaurants. There's four restaurants, and then we have Casey's Cupcakes. And it's just a great food and a fun place to be, a fun pool to hang out at. Nice. Well, everybody, until next time, thank you so much, by the way. Of Can't course. thank you enough. Thank you for being here. Well, great. Mm -hmm. It was a great time, wasn't it? Yes, it was. I had a fun. We Lots enjoyed fun. it, didn't we? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we did. Well, until next time, everybody, just remember to enjoy. enjoy. We'll be right back to learn about the spectacular Mission Inn and Spa. Welcome back to Health Beauty Life. Welcome to the historic Mission Inn Hotel and Spa. Hidden away on the streets of downtown Riverside, California is where you'll find this remarkable destination, where rich history meets modern luxury. With its elegant European-inspired decor and breathtaking architecture, this inland Southern California icon is a popular hideaway and indulgent getaway for visitors. Originally a 12-room adobe guest house in 1876, the hotel catered to wealthy Easterners and Europeans who ventured to Riverside for its lucrative citrus industry. A magnificent backdrop for weddings and other special events, the St. Francis Chapel is an awe-inducing point of interest on the historic property. Once inside the St. Francis Chapel, views of the grand gold leaf altar provide a regal, romantic atmosphere for its visitors. Today, the inn is owned and operated by Dwayne and Kelly Roberts. So Kelly, I heard you had a special name around here. I do, I'm known as the keeper of the inn and we have a beautiful spa named after me. Yeah, so. it was right in the background there, I saw that. And this is gorgeous, I mean, this is one of the restaurants obviously here, you have four restaurants. Correct, we have Dwayne's, that's named after my husband. And then we have our Bellas, which is Italian. And our famous Las Campanas, which is Mexican. And then our beautiful courtyard at the Mission Inn inside. So we love to give all of our guests the most unique and wonderful experience when they dine and stay with us. I got the feeling when I walked in, I mean, the surroundings are so gorgeous. It's a 108 year old piece of property. Wow. We're known as a historical landmark in California. And we just try to bring Europe to uh, all of uh, California and our country because you basically are in Europe when you come here. Oh no, I got it's, the feeling, it's amazing. So Kelly, I mean, this place has a long history and some celebrities and very important people that have stayed here. Yes, we have had many celebrities that have stayed here. We've had many people, famous people get married here at the Historic Mission Inn. We've had the Nixons, Betty Davis, Reagan's have honeymoon here, and the list goes on and on and on. So it's just a very, very unique property. Well, you do a lot of special things for couples here too. There's a lot of opportunities for like you're talking about a couple massage, special wines. Tell me a little oh, bit about well, that. We love to offer romance here and we have a beautiful villa, private villa for just the couple's massage. We have gorgeous suites that allow that romantic element to flow. 
beautiful wine list, great food, the ambience and art, you can't go wrong. You know, when I drove up to the valet, I got this feeling of like old California meets Europe. Definitely, the bells reflect that, our cannons reflect that. Matter of fact, we have the oldest bell on property in North America. Wow, that's impressive. It's very impressive. You've done a lot of detail here with the landscaping, the way it's laid out, the feel, the flow. I mean, it's just Thank an you. amazing job. We, we just like to make sure everything looks very pretty and yeah. manicured and that's detailed. And now, I know that you also have some really interesting artwork. Definitely, we have the Spanish art gallery and we have art from hundreds and hundreds of years all over and it's r really a must see if you're an art lover. Yeah, so what type of, of uh, art goes? It's mostly Spanish? Yes, Spanish it's Spanish art. colonial, there's Russian paintings, so it's a must see. You come look at all the gorgeous art from hundreds of years ago. This is a great experience. I recommend getting over here and you might even run into Casey and her mom, the, ke the keeper of the inn, inn Kelly. And uh, you know what? You won't be disappointed. So until next time, just remember to enjoy. enjoy. Coming up next, meet chef Paul Shoemaker of Savory Restaurant. All right, we're back with Chef Paul at Savory Restaurant in Malibu, California. Today we're here at Savory Restaurant in Malibu with owner and chef Paul Shoemaker. How you doing, Paul? Great. Welcome. Good to Good to see you today, and uh, you've got something pretty special for us uh, prepared to oh, prepare today, huh? Absolutely. Call it a summer salad. Really okay. simple. Well, how did you get started in this location? Um, you know, I, I love Malibu. I got married on the beach out here. Um, found love out here. Found a restaurant out here, and it just made sense. You know, I love surfing, and I love, I love this, the whole essence of Malibu. Living off this land, and it fits the concept of savory. It's really just seasonal local ingredients and just making people happy. Wow, that's amazing. And I know you like to use a lot of organic local fresh produce and uh, yeah. and that just makes the flavor just so much more, doesn't it? There's definitely that and there's definitely us hopping in our little golf cart and going to pick fresh watercress down by the creek and nasturtium and wood sorrel and, you know, chanterelles that grow in season. So, I don't know, wow. one with nature. It's awesome, I love it. What do you have for us today? Um, it goes great with any wine from whites to reds to whatever you like. It's using stuff that's in season, obviously. We have uh, apricots, mm -hmm. and we have uh, brook cherries. Other ingredients, we have uh, burrata, parmigiano-reggiano, pine nuts, arbicanya olive oil, that is local here in Malibu, lemon juice, breadcrumbs, balsamic vinegar, espalette chili, and fleur de sel, as well as prosciutto and arugula. And you got a little sugar here. You're gonna be doing something with that. Yeah, a little uh, sugar in the raw. Yeah? Sweeten things up. Right on. You could do it on a grill, you can do it in a pan in your kitchen, but Get a little char on the fruit. So we just basically take the fruit, place it on our sizzle platter, and we lightly sprinkle it with the sugar in the raw. So ideally I'm gonna start bruleeing this these apricots. Torch, sugar in the raw. Just point the flame on one part of the fruit, opposed to going all around, because we really want to start caramelizing the fruit. Smell it. it smells a little little bit like caramel. A little caramel. So yeah. you caramelize the sugar. It just adds a little bit more smoky flavor to the fruit itself. Nice. And then from this point, it's really important. Seasoning is everything. You want to season as you go along, all the way to the table or to your guest's table. So from this point, it's you got a sweet, smoky type flavor going on here. Uh, add a little espalette chili. I love the heat. So what this does is it... But it isn't really hot, though. It's just a lot of flavor, right? It's a lot of flavor, and it adds a little bit of sweet, sweet heat to it, I would say. So it's not peppery, it's not hot. And the color is nice. It's a beautiful color. And it, it, once again, it's all about filling the fruit. It, it, it's got sweet going on, it's got juices going on. A little bit of heat is good for it. Okay. You know, you can use black pepper, you can use cayenne pepper, whatever you like, whatever is in your kitchen. Next, we add the fleur de sel. Fleur de sel is the, uh, you know, flower of salt, they say in France. It, we use, you know, of course it's not local, but it comes from Brittany because it's a beautiful place over there in France. And usually it's the top part of the salt. Um, it's the flower of all the salt. It's used as a uh, finishing salt. It's a really rich salt. It's got great texture. And it's only used for seasoning at the very end of things, opposed to cooking. Usually cooking, you cook with gray salt or sea salt. No big deal. So from that port, um, we're gonna put that aside. We're gonna pull out our plate. Um, I'll show you the plate version. Then ideally, it's a salad, so you have to think about it. I mean, if you're gonna do a big party, then it's cool to do these holes so people can help themselves. But 
for a one person dish, we would like to cut the fruit basically down the middle because they're eating it with a fork and we want to make it easy for them. So cut the fruit in half. We literally are going to place the fruit throughout the dish. Like that. From that point, we're going to add the uh, burrata cheese. And it's just, you know, it's a very, very rich milky cheese. I mean, if you ever had a really good latte from any of your top coffee shops, I mean, the burrata in my mind is heaven. And actually, I'm using stracciatella. Um, it's a little bit, you know, what stracciatella is, it's the middle. I went straight for the kill. You know, I went for the middle of the burrata. So we added the burrata on each of the fruit from that point. I tend to use that aged balsamic vinegar. You can use any vinegar uh, which you prefer. For me, I like the consistency and the richness of it. So from this point, after the burrata, we're gonna go ahead and drizzle a little bit of this over the fruit and the burrata and on the plate. Okay, so there you have it. Fruit, brulee, burrata, vinegar. Next, um, we're gonna go ahead and mix the salad. Stay with us. When we come back, Chef Paul serves up his amazing organic salad. Welcome back. Now let's check in with Chef Paul. Next, um, we're gonna go ahead and mix the salad. Okay. So we have arugula, goes in a bowl. We have Parmesan cheese. You know, I like a lot of Reggiano cheese. Some people, you can do a half a tablespoon, you can do two tablespoons, I just go for the goal. We have beautiful uh, brook cherries from the farmer's market. We got pine nuts, really happy, from the pine tree. We have uh, breadcrumbs, which are optional, obviously. I just don't want to get those breadcrumbs. I got to work later on today, so. And you know, I'm gluten intolerant, so we'll stay away from those, but hey, optional, right? Optional, so I, I, I use ciabatta. I take ciabatta, ciabatta bread, no big deal. You can use brioche, you can use any time. They smell them. good, I wish I could eat them. Yeah, they're happy. Yeah. And a good part, um, what I like to do at the very, very end is hit it with more Parmesan cheese. Ooh. I'm just a junkie for it. Um, and Parmesan, you know, we used uh, stuff from Reggiano from Parma. It's aged 24 to 36 months. It's probably the, one of the best stuff. You can get stuff that's 12 months, but I prefer to go for the gold. And, um, you know, they say that the, the harder the cheese, the fatter it is. So nice. it is what it is. So from this point, we're going to add very simple um, lemon juice from okay. my lemon tree in the backyard in my freedom garden. Nice. It's to your liking. And we have this beautiful Arbacania olive oil, which I, which I love. I think it's, it's a great, it's a great, great olive. Um, it's here local in Malibu. We have a, a local Malibu. Um, Color's really nice on that. It's just a really great color. It's really thick, fruity, sweet, aromatic, but very healthy fat, okay, keep in mind. Oh yeah, let me try that. Yeah, very clean flavors. Oh, that's it's delicious. It's really a finishing oil. Just okay. like the Florida Cell, you use it to finish dishes. You don't cook with it because you're gonna cook all of the love. It's salads, finish it with fish, meats, chicken, whatever you eat, okay. no big deal. From that point, season it with a little bit of Florida cell, which I love, and uh, cracked black pepper. I use a little pepper mill, fresh, it's no big deal. Okay, there it is. Wow, that looks great. Colorful, seasonal, it's got a lot of flavor going on. Next step, we're gonna add the prosciutto. Mm -hmm. What prosciutto does is it brings the salt. It brings the salt, the sweet, nutty, smoky flavor that we're looking for in this dish. So keep in mind as we build this dish, it, 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 it all has a purpose. Uh, you have the sweet fruit, the milky burrata, the salty prosciutto, the fat. Next, we're gonna go ahead and top a beautiful salad on top and call it a day and get to eat because I'm hungry. Yeah, okay. So from this point, we're just gonna kind of mix it with your hands or tongs, whatever you feel comfortable with, and then literally just place it right in the middle. So you got a lot of color going on. I like to go ahead and finish it with a little more black pepper because I don't know, I'm just in love with everything. Uh, well, Patrick, here it is. Um, apricot salad, very simple. But there's a lot of ingredients in here and you prepare them correctly and that's what makes the difference. Yeah, it makes a difference. But like this salad, it could be used with whatever your, your favorite stone fruit is or even figs, you know, figs are a great addition when they oh, come yeah, into September. Mm. So, I mean, just think about it. Just any stone fruit, anything sweet will can accommodate this dish with the prosciutto, the burrata, the cherries, etc. the spicy well, My mouth's watering if you don't mind. Yeah, I'm going off the seat. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna get some. Get it all in there. Yeah, a little of everything. The, yeah, so I'm gonna do one. this. and Like the, the, the mouth is salivating in. Yeah. Oh, it's, I gotta get a cherry. It makes you happy, you know? Okay, this is just about every component, all every right? Component. Including pine nuts. You're gonna have. So, here we go. This is a big pie. Oh, didn't put the croutons, though. We'll do that in a minute. 
That's way beyond. <laughs> Thank you. It's simple. It's, it's, it's not rocket science. It's just cooking, you know? At the end of the day, we're just here eating. <laughs> it's just like, you get so many layers. And then the cheese just kind of, it almost ties everything together. It ties all the spices, it ties all the fruits together. And it kind of emulsifies on your tongue and then it just grabs it, pulls it right in the middle. It's a balance. Yeah, you did a great job. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for having us over here. Yeah, no worries. So when you're out in Malibu, get out to Savory because you will not be disappointed. And until next time, just remember to enjoy. Okay, we're back. Special thanks to all the guests on this week's show. To Casey Reinhardt of Casey's Cupcakes for spilling her secrets of creating those incredible treats. To Kelly Roberts for sharing the rich history of the Mission Inn and Spa in Riverside, California. And finally, thanks to Chef Paul Shoemaker of Savory Restaurant in Malibu for spending time with us and sharing his unique culinary tips and tricks. We'll see you all here next week when we roll through an action-packed day in the Big Apple. We'll show you the sights, sounds, and nighttime lights of New York City. And we'll visit STK, It's Not Your Daddy Steakhouse, in Midtown Manhattan for a one-of-a-kind cooking and dining experience. Then we'll take you on a wild musical ride to the legendary Apollo Theater in downtown Harlem. Until next time, just remember to enjoy.